నమస్తే నమస్తే మంచు కళానిధి అండ్ డాక్టర్ టిపిఎస్ మీ హియర్ వర్ టుగెదర్ ఇన్ గుండూర్ వర్ లక్ష్మీ ప్రసాద్ ఈస్ దర్ ఇన్ దట్ ప్లేస్ వి వర్ ఇన్ విజ్ఞాన్ యూనివర్సిటీ ఫర్ ఎం టెడెక్స్ టాక్ టూ థౌజండ్ నైన్టీన్ జనవరి సంటైమ్ యా ఫిఫ్త్ ఫిఫ్త్ సిక్స్త్ టూ డేస్ రైట్ fourth fifth yeah, sixth sixth was the ted talk sixth yeah. was the ted so yeah. we were there and that is where i met yes and i guess we met many people but i don't think anybody kept that contact other than myself I, for me it's only manju i don't know whether manju had a good tie up or not yeah yeah i mean couple of them yes sir. i think uh, auto auto one other is in touch yeah um in couple of them yes yeah. then manju was kind enough to cover my story on one day on indian express which yes. is, which led to inadu and yeah. that is how some people like lakshmi and all lakshmi prasad and all is here because of that yes sir yeah. that's nice so um, manju what is your basic qualification how did you travel and land up in uh, indian express one second yes sir one second i my system is uh, so um i belong i born and brought up in telangana in yeah. the varangal district and um, i i did like graduation regular graduation in kakia university bsc maths physics chemistry yeah um and uh, then of course a senior of mine had done journalism uh so i i was very fascinated by what is this new profession how does it work of course i was always somebody who loved language who loved communication i was better at language communication and people and all that then uh, that was just i think uh, late 90s when journalism was on a boom you know television channels had opened up Okay. and uh, you know websites there was a boom on websites okay. so they needed a lot of writers lot of journalists and uh, so i heard about journalism and i uh, joined asian college of journalism which is still considered to be among the top colleges in india mm. uh, and uh, yeah so i joined finished my one year course and uh, i got placement in indian express uh, like early late 90s early 2000 around that time and then it's been a great journey i worked in indian express then i worked in deccan chronicle and i worked for a uk based media house after that i worked for a hans india which is in fact celebrating 10 years to me and then again indian express sort of uh, had a new set of publications so they said if i could come and launch it so it's been about 6 years with the indian express hyderabad and uh, almost 20 years in this profession and there hasn't been a single exciting day in my life uh, i think i'm cut out <laughs> thank you uh, even today i i think i'm basically a writer a reporter no matter you know what i edit and all that the joy of being able to amplify a voice talk about something somebody is doing to the vast public in the best possible way that is one of the best things about being a journalist and of course putting out the truth telling people amplifying voices that is what is the most passionate thing about journalism wonderful i am not asking your age when i ask you from graduation no, how I'm many years you are in service no 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 the new thing is you should actually tell your age and then people sit here oh my god you look so young so i am 44 i am 45 in about a week next thursday is my birthday Uh, so, so that's the new <laughs> wonderful happy birthday and then a long tenure looks like a long tenure great experience in this short span of time because it's <laughs> not you. that easy to establish yourself in journalism it's a highly competitive field yes yeah. yes and then it has very regular timings in my own journalism college uh, i mean if, if there were 25 people who graduated i think just about 6 or 7 are still in this profession it's the it can be uncertain the timing can be irregular you really need to be extremely passionate about this profession otherwise every day it's hell for you so either you will love it or you will hate it there's and, nothing in between and not only that it is not a profession which you can bet get trained more than that probably 
what you need is that great zeal and passion for doing it today yes. we have yes. a bad story from afghanistan yes yeah the, the photographer yeah photographer yeah. see it's all risky right yes it is yeah yeah so it's not a very smooth path sometimes it is not it is it not, is not. Yes. and that is one part of kalanidhi but the other most interesting part what uh, manju does is tell manju what is that great interesting thing <laughs> okay so uh, i run a social initiative called the rice bucket challenge uh, you must all have heard of the ice bucket challenge but in this uh, we actually drive donations to uh, to give rice to the to the poor it started off in 2015 but i'm proud and very happy to say that uh, in one year which is last uh, janta curfew till now we could raise around 21 lakh 21 uh, 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 21 lakh rupees worth groceries for the poor uh, i think that has been the biggest success of uh, this initiative uh, i mean even i have never thought it would it would rise to that thing uh, to, to such a magnitude but today we are happy that rise to the challenge is like the go to uh, you know campaign and initiative which can quickly be able to fill the gap between people who need uh, people who need basic food we do just groceries not anything fancy rice dal maybe onions and couple of things so that you can at least have the rice and sambar and survive for some time and then think of the next thing manchu what makes you happy when the poor gets their food and then you see the smile in their face or maybe a recognition from somebody in terms of award rewards and then coverage writing about you what makes you happy more both both make me happy because one feeds to the other so uh, first of course being able to help a person i think uh, in fact i believe that even your whatsapp status sir that you use every day on your phone should be of use to somebody why why should you always uh, share only a selfie or or a motivational in fact i've started sharing job uh, opportunities of uh, or job opportunities in my whatsapp status uh, in the last 6 months there have been so many youngsters who have been asking me akka i need a job do you know something in your newspaper or any job i will do i will be your driver i will be your assistant or something like that it became very serious in the last 3 uh, to 4 months and it also happened that somebody added me into a um Somebody says mic is disturbing. Is that true? No, it's uh, okay. Is that audible? It's okay. I think only this much we can expect. Hyderabad is oh, raining. Yeah. Raining also yes. today. Yeah. Yes, sir. It is. It is. Yeah. yeah. So I so somebody added me into a WhatsApp group with jobs, and I started uh, sharing that because I feel we should be useful, well, in whatever way possible. So when you ask about being able to help the poor, it's absolutely the most ultimate feeling. In fact. helping people is a very addictive feeling it, it's like smoking it's like the drinking it's like narcotic once you enjoy the high of being useful to another person that will constantly aid you to do more things in life that was a very genuine answer and the most professional answer because if she manju says that yeah i find happiness better I I I, I, I no I, actually I wanted to tell that then you are not fit to be in paper because you cover lot of people in paper and you are against yeah. your profession so you had a balanced view I think most of the people try to hide in terms of understanding the real feeling and they don't expose I I tell you why awards and recognition is so important because when an award ceremony happens typically these days uh at award ceremony happens there are about 1000 people who are watching you another 500 people in the dais maybe another 60 organizers who've seen your profile so which means with one award function i'm straight away reaching to around 1500 people who know about me and who know what i do and it's always the number so tomorrow when something happens they want to do a donation they're like okay there is this person called manju who does this why don't we go and you know probably join her in that um and then yes you get more donations because people know about your your uh, particular campaign they read about it they find it credible they find that it's transparent and then they come to me which again 
goes back to the final person who I am. So it's all interrelated. It's all a matrix. <laughs> so, um, Manju, you were focus is mostly on feeding people they are actually starving or they want food do you think yes. that's the biggest problem in india and do you think that's where people should focus or what could be that india wants that's our heading what right. india needs what india want what is that we have to focus yes sir yes. Uh, i think see india is is a country which has a majority of of poor people, poor lower middle class and the middle class. So we cannot ignore the, the below the poverty line people. I think even the latest figures uh, I was just seeing, the indicators of you know United Nations SDGs and all, we still have a, a, have a like a 21 percent I think is still BPL. I mean, what should happen? How can you how can you expect any sort of progress in the world if you are still you know one fourth of it is still under the uh, poverty line, you don't have food, yeah? All the public policies that you had, in, whenever people approach us for groceries, the first question I ask them is, why are you not getting your food from the from the government? Where is your grocery kit? Why are you not able to use your ration card, uh, the public distribution system? So most of these things are flawed, which is why maybe, in fact, if you go and check the granaries of the food corporate of India, I'm sure they are you know, a big surplus of food, but it's still not getting to the final person. The, the, there is some flaw in the supply chain, which is why, despite our great surplus of stocks, today, uh, you, you know, during lockdown, when people are not able to earn their livelihood, you must remember that all these people actually earn livelihood at other days. Now, imagine for two months, four months, they can't sell their way. They can't go and, you know, do their business, maybe wage or whatever it is. Those are the people who need this. So basically flawed, flawed policies, flawed uh, governance at various levels. Those have to be, uh, like you said, I mean, poverty first thing, whatever, I mean, whatever percentage that is, uh, um, that is currently uh, prevalent in India, that has to be uh, addressed uh, at a very, you know, across all the levels. I mean, whether it's healthcare, whether it's education, uh, whether it is stopping migration to the city, adding, you know, a whole lot of problems. So from my perspective, since I work in the sector of uh, hunger mitigation, I would say there should be no person who should be hungry in a country. That, that should be treated as the ultimate insult to a country. So it's not the produce the production which matters, it is how the produce can be taken to the actual required person. That means we are talking about the lack of logistics in India. And logistics is a very big business and why we don't have good entrepreneurs, why are we not supporting logistics, supply chain, getting goods to the right place. We only uh, maximum resort to Maybe the government like a train or maybe the goods movement is not happening. Is it not what India has to focus? One point if somebody wanted to say, is it not logistics which India has to? Because I remember TN Shashan's book which says, we don't know how to preserve tomato for a few days. And we have been seeing in news that whatever produced in Bangalore or Karnataka and Tamil Nadu, people are dumping and whereas yes. we are paying in Hyderabad for tomato minimum 30 rupees in the retail market for per kg. Yes. So is it not that logistics what need to be improved and what steps can be taken? Yes, sir. Absolutely. Yeah. It's not always that we have a scarcity of things. It's already available and you have people who need it. But like I said, the mapping of both these things is not happening. Uh, also, even if the policies are right, there is so much of corruption across the levels that by the time, uh, like I said, the same tomato reaches from Bengaluru to Hyderabad, it, should, it would have uh, passed on through so many hands. And somewhere, even if one hand is not doing the right thing, your tomato quality goes for a toss, your, your tomato's flavor goes for a toss, uh, uh, it gets spoiled, and of course, cost, everything can go. So, I don't know. So, maybe in the new, again, it goes back to why corruption. It goes back to the problem that our law and order is not, is not, is not so strict. People know that, 
उनके टुडे इवन इफ दस सिविल केस इट टेक ट्वेंटी इयर्स अच्छा तब देखेंगे अभी अभी जो टमाटो से पैसा आया हुआ जो फीडबैक आया हुआ लेट्स एंजॉय what to happen i turn 75 years old and that when the case will so it's all interrelated interconnected it's like a huge big mess that needs to be i guess on a very very large there has to be a revolution again sir for for us to really leap from into you know another zone altogether but i don't know whether in the agriculture when we say there are rebates given probably uh, some loan is given at a reduced price but when it comes to marketing when the product is to be taken to the user there is no government support actually i think because yeah. we see lot of land which is free people don't cultivate people don't know what to cultivate i was focusing on agriculture and related to webinar at least a few during this covid time i okay. was trying to connect the producers and the value addition people and the customers and we found the gap is when somebody produces they are not able to take it to the market right don't you think that the government initiative like the market in the sunday market or maybe there are rait bazaars or yes. maybe relate to that great uh, strike which happens in the Ajah. capital city haryana yeah is yeah. it actually lot of politics or is it the real problem or maybe some volunteer people maybe organizations can there be some movement what we can do is what we are looking at not finding fault with the system right. where we are also right. part of that citizenship right 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 absolutely so what is that positive step we can do can we keep on writing something can we keep on producing such because you are a press person i yes. always believe that the constitution makers or the law makers the legislation legislators one second one is the judiciary and third one is the administrator i think all the three wherever the intervention the fourth pillar or fourth pole what Let's can take. intervene in this is only the press yes and today every day they are proving they are much more power, powerful than all the three possibly <laughs> so i'm sure what we can do or with your connections with your activity what can be done to make india better where we keep on focusing and keep on writing interviewing people getting that into focus probably what you do in your newspaper i'm sure there will be lot of people who are take cue from that and then do it because we generally feel that the newspaper reading is just a time pass for most of the people because mostly it is not focusing to the real needs other than probably it is getting into the uh, immediate benefit of attracting some masalas most of the time okay correct so can we have a focus on getting to the real development of the nation can we focus it more closer can we have some people who are in press who will also have such concern sharing is there any such activity happening when you meet in the press and then look at what india needs let us focus on do you press people think about it very revolutionary yes sir uh, so in the last 10 15 years yeah. uh, just like political reporting just like sports reporting or business reporting there has been uh, a new a new uh, you know channel of reporting it's called the development reporting yes. uh, i think this is this is probably 15 or 20 years th- that this, this term was coined and uh, we we know of people like uh, you know journalist uh, p saina palagumi saina who's uh, who's who's sort of writings have really really made an impact uh, on on how agriculture is looked at in india the kind of policies that are being formulated so around 15 20 years this whole new thing for development journalism started way like you said editors sort of sat down and decided that okay fine you give your film masala you give your political news you give your business you give your technology but what about things like policies of the government of agriculture so that's when there has been this this beat has been created journalists have been dedicatedly working on actually not just writing not just going to one press conference taking down the notes and writing it's actual research based 
where journalists go live in a village for maybe two to three months or six months, whatever it takes. Understand, like you said, is it is it is it is there a problem in the production itself? Are we are we is there a problem with the soil or or are we not planting the right things? If we are planting the right things, are we not using the right technology to get it? What about storage? Where are we going wrong? And once everything is right, getting back to the market. So there has been very dedicated efforts in this particular genre of reporting. Uh, and and yes, push policies. Uh, if you see a, a lot of Sunday magazines, a lot of newspapers have opinion pages where policy makers actually sit and tell us, discuss why should this be. Uh, you know, why Why should we have like a, that Bukubar to Dara like this, the minimum uh, price that the farmer should get. So all these policies have been doing, but it's still not adequate. It's still not, has, hasn't given the critical mass where, where this, you know, the problem of farmers or, you know, how we produce and, you know, all these solutions haven't been seriously thought out. We need one more revolution at all levels. I hope it will happen. Like we've had maybe a milk uh, revolution uh, a few, a few, I guess, 30, 40 years ago, where the entire milk industry underwent a complete revolution. I mean, it's one of the best models on how an entire industry can be turned around, like with a pivot point. Uh, that is still happening on various grounds, but I would still think it's not adequate. It, it needs political will, it needs people participation, it needs technology, it needs uh, commitment, a whole lot of things. Hopefully, in the next three to four years, we will be able to move to another zone. Right. So, you are referring to the white revolution, which yes. happened because of Korean. Can uh, we have yeah, a food? Yeah, yeah. food Anand, food, Anand Gujarat. Anand Gujarat. Can we have yes. a food revolution by somebody from Andhra Pradesh very soon? Hopefully, yes, yes. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, we've, had, we've seen technology, like for example, you see something like, like mobile phones. The way mobile phones have moved from, you know, a, a feature phone to a smartphone to a that to this. Today, phones can actually, uh, you know, record your heartbeat and send it to your doctor saying, okay, this guy seems to be there's something wrong with this guy, take care of him, book an ambulance. So, you see how phones, the entire telecommunication has undergone a complete revolution. I mean, today we are able to treat people or do surgeries based on technology. So that kind of an impetus still hasn't happened in the basics. Maybe it's infrastructure, uh, agriculture, and, and things like that. Let me ask you a basic question. When I just told you that, no, somebody is dumping whole lot of tomatoes in Karnataka somewhere. Yes, you yes. that something like that... Uh, news comes and it i am sure it is taking some maybe uh, 10 centimeter by 20 centimeter no, no, no. it has been it has been a page one picture sir it has been a page one six column photograph in my newspaper it is you are paper. making it high costly i am asking if you are spending that much space for a very great news what impact it makes for a common person what impact it makes to the government what impact it makes otherwise such a coverage is only to create a concern for all petty people like me who are on the road who is helpless he can only okay. quote in different places does it really go to the uh, brain of those people who can take some policy decisions does it really um, right, get into right. their ears so, so you're asking whether actually covering something in the newspaper will change any policy yes yeah Yes, definitely. Because when you put out a problem with that kind of a space, with that kind of an importance, and with that, it really hits the, the policy makers, the ministers, the officials, the civil service servants, that today this is the news that people are reading. People across the country, the city, are putting their focus on something like the tomatoes, the, the mismanagement of the tomato industry. So yes, definitely, it is our duty to first highlight, to reflect what is the problem. There are many, many times where, in fact, all the uh, ministries, all the IAS officers get all the newspapers in the city and the secretaries or whoever their media, uh, their media department, they actually go through, mark out and say, okay, this newspaper carried this. This is 
the solution that they have spoken to, uh, you know, a lot of policy makers, maybe uh, think tanks. Uh, this is what they are suggesting. Can this be formulated? Yes, there have been multiple times where, uh, you know, suggestions have been taken and actually implemented. So, you, you cannot ignore the power of a good story. No, I am 100% sure. I know that I also had the privilege of having all the newspapers kept in an array with all the headings seen. That's how it should be arranged. There is a proper way of arranging it on my table. Morning before I reach there, it has to be there. I had the privilege of looking at such newspapers. But my right. question is, when you invest money and space and time on your newspaper printing such a thing, yeah. as a layman, what I expect for asking this question only, I asked you the first Okay. Don't you think I look for a second uh, coverage on that, what action or maybe that is an extra advantage even for a political leader to say, with this newspaper I did this and this is what I want you to report. Do We don't see such action item immediately a response. What you're is, asking about follow-ups. Follow yeah, follow-up actions, that's what I want. Okay. Okay, so you're saying, will the, okay, today tomato uh, story has been there and then tomorrow you go back to Kangana Ranaut or you go back to Amit Khan Divorce. What happens to the tomato? That's your question. Yes, I love such a newspaper where there is a follow-up. It shows that, yeah, newspaper is not just a postman's job delivering what right. somebody gives. Right, you are right. actually behind them. Yes, yes, absolutely. Uh, uh, there are follow-up. In fact, there are times when we take up some things. See, it could be even a pothole on the road. I remember that there was a big pothole uh, near uh, this Prasad, uh, LV Prasad Eye Hospital. Uh, very big, huge pothole, which is like a main road. And our photographer went, to, like you said, gave it a space. We tweeted, we, we did a campaign, whatever. And then on day two, nothing happened. Again, that, that photo was posted in the same place. And it said day two, nothing has happened. I think on day six or day seven, the GHMC was directed by the monthly G to get that uh, that pothole fixed. So yes, uh, there are follow-ups of uh, some issues uh, where a reporter will continuously go and say, sir, what happened to this? Yesterday we carried this. What is your response to it? If you are not going to do, uh, we will be we will be you know uh, making this a bigger one bigger issue. Maybe we will start a campaign online. We will do it. So, uh, uh, maybe as a, as a layman, you perhaps, perhaps we just skim through the pages, but uh, a lot of very important issues are certainly being followed up. In fact, it's, it's, it's a matter of pride for the media house to say that we brought this impact. So, there are what is called the impact stories and we ourselves actually talk about it. You know, it could be there was a time when uh, a startup was actually looking for uh, a bank loan. But after we wrote about it, within a week, uh, the, the, the bank manager said, yes, I saw this story. I think I'm, I re I'm really impressed by what you're doing. Come, let's meet for. So that person actually got a loan. So there are times where what we do, <laughs> thank you. However small it is, there is an impact. And as reporters, yes, we do uh, follow-ups at most of the time. I don't know, Manchu, whether I dragged you on a different rail where you don't want to travel, but that's what I did. I wanted these discussions to go not with a very formatted content. I okay. thought wherever it goes, it can go. We can always right. come back and have discussions. Maybe people can take it up. Maybe some new yeah. thoughts can come. So right. my thought was generally maybe 7.15 to 7.45. I will start asking few questions and probably next half an hour, I will ask anybody to ask few questions or maybe yeah. you can throw some questions or maybe you can initiate some other discussions probably in the way you want. Yes. Yeah. yes. That is what we plan and uh, incidentally yesterday I was talking to one of my school master whose son happens to be an IT head in Texas, Krishna Kumar. When okay. he is going to join immediately when I send this brochure he said I know Manchu Kalanidhi. Oh, okay. Lovely. <laughs> Krishna Kumar also is there today. Probably tomorrow Krishna Kumar have an exclusive se session, but I think, it, I don't know whether Manju will be able to join tomorrow. Krishna Kumar ji was also very close to press and reporting, 
but now he is one of the top IT bras in Texas with the wow. new government in America. And it was a great celebration for all villagers where I also hail from the same village. His father happens to be my teacher, not just my teacher who taught me, he never taught me in my classroom, but whenever I go back to my home and stay in my old hermitage house, right. he comes and visits and spends a lot of time with my people who have camping with me. Right. So that's right. allowed. I, I don't think I speak to anybody else other than Krishna Kumar's father once in a month at least. Lovely, lovely. So Krishna Kumar, if he is um, ready, he could. He is there, Krishna Kumar Edatil. He was Beautiful. mentioning that Manju, I know Manju Kalan. Uh -huh. That's what is it. I, I hope to listen to him too tomorrow. Yeah. And yeah. see his transition from this part to that part of the country. And, and I was just, I also don't know. Most of the people, though he is my from my native, I don't think I met him physically. But then I, I was Googling automatically i saw the book and then i ordered it only monday it will reach okay so he has a beautiful book also you just Hola. google uh, i don't give any introduction of any speakers because i want all of you if you are interested you should look at that because it's going to be a series of people we thought we will have 27 yes, yes. 27 people but now today i have got more than 40 people in list so no, i think okay, we are okay. going to extend it up to the end of august that's what is going to happen but yeah, end of that, I wanted to make few points and then make it a very, yes, very, sir. very, very active forum where we yes. can pick up some activity and then have very specific programs. We were yes, discussing sir. on how young people can be molded to become mentors, navigators, torchbearers. They will take yeah. this message. And I want people to have a tight hand with the people like Manchu who does a lot of social activities. That's also one part. So I'm sure there can be a lot of... And also I would like to say that as journalists, we would love to amplify stories. I mean, yeah. there are so many people right now uh, about a good bunch of people. So, so if you have uh, something for us to highlight, you have a problem, you have a story, you have an inspiring, uh, you know, a nephew or a niece who's done maybe a startup, who's come up with an app. Or, or who's, who's won a big award, anything inspiring, interesting. So, Manchu, all, Manchu, please. my story was a real blow up and then simply made it yes. into blow or it was not a true story at all? No, no, it was great. It was great. We, I personally received so many calls saying, please. I think that day you were flooded with calls. Right? Yeah, that, was, calls. that makes a lot of impact. I think one yes. of the greatest thing what uh, journalists have the ability to give a beautiful title that attracts. <laughs> and nobody <laughs> gave me that title of uh, WhatsApp Guru. That is, you gave me that. <laughs> right? No, no. What you have been doing is also phenomenal. Not everybody is full of jokes like you, who can talk like you, who can use technology. I so love the way you use technology and reach out to people. Uh, and it calls for commitment. It's your real commitment towards doing things. Uh, so I appreciate all these things, uh, which is why uh, I also made sure that it wasn't a small two-column story somewhere, but a lead story. And yeah, I mean, even if somebody asks me, I always direct them to your uh, WhatsApp pay number or to your page. Uh, your YouTube channel is so popular, sir. I see like, you put up a lot of amazing testimonies. Just thank you, thank you for that. Anybody who could, I wanted this to be an open forum. I think Krishna Kumar has made a, a small comment on the chat box that he is oh. enjoying the discussions. Yeah. Lovely, lovely. <laughs> let's let's see. That's that's best. Tomorrow, I also hope to, uh, you know, yes, yes Krishna Kumar ji, uh, I hope to join the discussion tomorrow, uh, and and uh, and hear what you have to say. I, I know a lot of. The entire series is very interesting. I saw your, uh, I think next 10 days you have mentioned who's talking on what day. Very interesting profile, sir. Yeah, we have Manmohan Reddy. I'm sure he will have because he is the man who pulled me to agriculture. When I worked on education and then doing that counseling and maybe from that, that uh, paper he only got that information. He was telling education should be only a extra bonus you get. What exactly you should work is in agriculture. So he pulled me into that. Oh, okay. Manmohan Reddy is there who could... Um, uh, we were discussing only on that logistics and then distribution of food and we wanted to have a food revolution. That I think that was the focus where Manju was discussing. Mm, yeah, yeah. So many things, even in front. The other day I was talking to uh, one Miss Kalpana Ramesh who is a, who's a social activist. 
he was talking about how big problems have such small solutions. So to give you an example, he was talking about how there was a certain abandoned area uh, somewhere near the slums, near Jubilee Hills, uh, when the girls, young girls of that area found it difficult to go and come because it was slightly dark and every day around 7.38, there were a bunch of guys, all rich guys who would come in their cars and bikes with their drink, make a menace, create a menace, uh, become a sexual harassment, all kinds of things. This happened. Then apparently Kalpana approached the government, I mean the, the GHM, and asked for two people to come and do the calling. It seemed like a very, you know, a very simple uh, solution. But after some time, I think when COVID and all happened, people said, sorry, we are very busy guarding the containment zones. We can't send anybody at this point of time. We heard all sorts of things happen. Then finally, Kalpana managed to get two floodlights in that area. Two floodlights. All that they did was get two floodlights and that's it. Once the light came up, this entire gang cleared up. No, none of these guys came. No drinking, no bikes. Uh, no harassment, nothing. So it looks, it's such a simple solution that because it was dark and nobody would notice them, these guys would come and do all this drama, not at party. Once the lights were on, that's it. So she was saying, we often think it calls for CCTV cameras, we need 24-hour uh, patrolling. No, make it light and bright, not a single person would come and sit. I think so, for most of the difficult problems, probably the solutions are very simple. Yes. That's why yes. one of my book is called Life Made Simple. <laughs> yes, of course. I think of for course. most of the problems, we have simple solutions around. But we need an eye to look at it. That's the yes. creativity which people want, I think. Yeah. Sometimes we also complicate. Uh, like there was this, some app that was talking. Apparently, that could be a camera that will be fixed on, the, on cars and bikes. And it will see the potholes in the road and it will send a direct GPS message to the GHM. Why? Why do we need such complicated technology? As human beings, you can see these potholes. You can just call them and say, Acha, yaha pe aa jao, yaar. Ye jo cafe hai, uske aage hai. Do we need to invest in such technologies? True. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think yeah. Manmohan also has kept some message there. Most of the people have this problem of uh, coming on to video and then immense and impactful journey of these people may be a true dream to see it soon, the reality. Yeah, that's true. Of course, of course, of course. We have people yeah. from uh, different parts of the country. We have somebody joined from UK. Prakash ji, you have something to ask. We have from <laughs> US. We have from different parts of the world. You can ask them about anything. Yeah, yeah, you can ask about the uh, the campaign that we do. Yeah. How transparent? How do you ensure? You can ask about how does one get a story published in in uh, in the newspaper, right? <laughs> yeah, you can you can ask uh, any any sort of. Thank, thank you, thank you, Doctor T P Shashikumar and uh, Manchu Kalanidhi. Uh, good to hear from you. Yes. Uh, yeah. I'm just, I thought I will uh, have a listening. Okay. You are doing good. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. The thing, thing I find in, the, in, in India is the corruption. Right. And, uh, you know, corruption is everywhere. From how do you, do you have any idea how you tackle the corruption? It's, it's you know, In, in yeah. the UK, mm -hmm. when an uh, MP did some corruption for something like thousand pounds, about one lakh rupees. Mm -hmm. He was removed from the party, put in jail. Mm. Uh, when would this happen? Or like, you know, when uh, somebody is breaking the law on COVID, they get fined, whether they are MP or a minister. Right. When would this happen in India? Right. Will it happen is one of the questions first. In India, we can never think of something like that. They would they would become like, uh, I mean, it's, it's actually a done thing. In India, it's considered that if you are joining politics, you are there to make money. <laughs> so when, when social activists uh, act 
actually think of politics. They're like, oh my god, we never had this. You know, how dare you? How dare you do this? And that's like I said, yeah, it's it's corruption is one of so deep rooted. Even after all this technological advances, where you can see who is doing money, still, if you want a provident fund, something that you worked hard all through your life for it to come. You still have to pay at least five to six people in, I think, the AG's office and in the provident fund office. Otherwise, it's just impossible. You will not get your pension money. And this has been like a, a mafia, a racket that has been happening for, I think, a few decades. And this has been happening despite everything being computerized, you know. The money that comes from the bank to the to, to you, your final day, the whole process is automated. But still, there are people who make 10 to 15,000 rupees on every pensioner. Nobody has been able to do that. It's like such a huge, it's like a change of mindset. People should stop, stop giving, stop bribing, have that sense of pride, you know, I will wait and take even for vaccinations. Okay, we have free vaccinations. We have paid vaccination. But people say, Acha, what is the cost of the vaccine? Oh, okay, 1200. Can I pay 1500 and get it done within one hour near a hospital close to my house? Because waiting may be another thing. Right? So it's like such a thingy fluted thing. It's, it's in our very blood that it has been happening. I mean, we still don't have a brashtacha free Bharat. Uh, I don't know when that will, that will happen. It is. It has to. It has to have a law. It has to have strict enforcement. At so many multiple levels, it has to happen to find any solution. If, uh, as Manju says, if I have to pay some money to save some time, I just wanted to draw the attention where in Gulf and all the punishment is <laughs> assume that you have to pay. 150 real. Mm -hmm. You cannot pay 150 real at a stretch. Okay. You will have to go 10 days and pay 15 reals per day. Oh. And stay there in the queue for one hour. So assume that you have done some crime of saving some time. Say you have violated a traffic rule. Okay. Because you don't want to stop there for one minute or two minutes. Right. The punishment is next 15 days you have to go and stand in queue, spare 3 hours, <laughs> paying, <laughs> even the richest fellow get that as a punishment. Right, right. I think um, most the people bribe because just now you said I want to save time so I bribe. Yes. If the punishment yes. is not Basically, paying money, yeah. reversing yeah. the order, I think that is yeah. one of the biggest punishment people can have. Correct. You got it. Uh, yes, sir. Excuse yes, me, sir. Doctor yeah. um, Shashi Kumar. Yeah. Uh, don't you think that judiciary is the root cause of all the problems in India? It is not because, because the is judiciaries are line. only judiciaries are only functional who are implementing the rule which are made by the legislators and the parliament. We have a lot of rules, but there is no the judiciary. Like in if we have a case. It takes 10 years, 20 years. Yeah, that is again, that is again people, because... People, people can escape. Yeah, people that is again because, more. because the framing of the case depends on the administration, the police, the dealers, the advocates. That is where it is taking a lot of time. Because we have a rule where we don't decide, the decision is not at a stretch. Yeah. Definitely, if it is a criminal case, the government is involved. So there will be a lot of influence on government to get rid of that. If it is a civil case, definitely I have got two people. It is generally elongated. There are a lot of cases on the land ownership. Yeah. And that becomes a big case for long years. So yes. we have got that judiciary is not responsible because the lawmakers made it so difficult so that people can survive. Those yes. who have got power, those who have got position, those who have got influence, those who have got a yeah. lot of money, they can get some path faster. Otherwise, do you think some cases are taken so fast in Supreme Court and decisions are taken overnight? 
Whereas there are problems which are lying in the queue for long years. Correction. The, the, the ones that are fast track, half the time, you pay, you get done, you, you move your things fast. Yeah. Again. <laughs> so in, in India, there is no rule of law. Do you mean that is the reason? There is no enforcement, uh, sir. I would say there is a law. For example, you should wear a mask. This is the rule of the law. Until the government formally says, Every person, every Indian should wear a mask in the public place. Okay. Now, assuming in a in a city like Hyderabad, in a city like Hyderabad, how many people? Yeah, like you said, it's never here. It's here. Like they, they use it like glasses. You know, ek bar nikalo, ek bar dalo, like that. So every person, every Hyderabadi should wear a mask in public place. But how will you ensure? How will you ensure that everybody is wearing? Do you have police personnel? Do you have CCTV cameras? Do you have people who will report and say he is not safe? No. The kind of population we have and the kind of enforcement tools that we have are extremely, you know, mismatched. Now, why is it mismatched? Why aren't we giving budgets for enforcement? Will the government do that? It's all. I didn't. I think I'm too small as a journalist to even discuss. I I still need a lot more experience. And a lot more thought. For no, no. Manju, Manju really point. directed, I think every one of us will direct it to that point that population is the problem. That also, sir, it's that's what India is such a complicated country. You don't know where to begin. Uh, I think uh, when was this? Uh, during Indira Gandhi regime, uh, they had decided uh, first they thought that population is, is a big problem. Then somebody said, uh, Manmohan Reddy says, please help me to speak. Uh, I think we should probably ask him to. You have speak. to unmute. Manmohan Reddy has to unmute. There is a mic. You have to unmute. Then I am yeah. sure you can speak. Yeah. Now you can yeah. speak. Yeah. Yes, please, please go ahead. Now can I speak? Yes. Yes. Na Namaste, Manju Madam. And Namaste. My sir. See, what I am looking from you, enlightened souls, uh, is uh, at least if you take uh, uh, three or four uh, verticals, like farming, education, uh, and uh, environment, uh, and one more thing is uh, the present crisis, little bit, last. So first is farming, which can address uh, the, the, the real purpose of our uh, uh, journey. So what is happening is, we, we, when we don't have the right food, our thinking is not being focused in the right directions. That's the biggest culprit. So right. instead of Instead of focusing in too many areas, if you can focus on one area, which will really create a bigger impact, it can impact in, in multiple areas. So I think that uh, uh, this is a core area where we need to really mend uh, the existing uh, hiccups, what we are facing over uh, in this farming sector. Of that all, what I observed uh, being a producer and as a marketer, we don't have right platform to give the right food to the needy people who are, who are, who are conscious to uh, buy the right food. So still, we are not able to focus down. We enlightened souls, we should create some platforms whereby which once we, uh, we got the uh, demand versus supply, once we create a sustained demand, getting the right produce is not a problem. So I saw your rice bucket challenge, these challenges I have seen. But if we can focus to a little extent to, to this kind of an, a bigger crisis that is waiting down, people have become sensitively insensitive and creating, they are creating a bigger mess. They are discussing about only a curing, not a preventive aspect. Right. So which will take more time and energy. Correct, so correct. These, no, no, the agree these things are temporary like uh, banking but yeah the problem has to be resolved there should be a day where there should be no there should be no need for a rice bucket challenge that is the kind yeah, of that, thing. Yeah. that is a ladder once that ladder has come now you climb to the next level now i'm looking into kind of a, a focus on farmer see we, we we are not focusing on farming when we have the right food as again as i'm saying again we can uh, multitask so, in these impactful journeys, I am expecting uh, from these uh, enlightened souls, uh, you please let me know, uh, are you into this kind of a thing where we can give small 
uh, focus into this kind of uh, uh, conscious uh, buyers, a group of conscious buyers. Uh, please uh, uh, elaborate on this. I'll be happy. Madam Anjum, Madam, please. Yes, sir. I mean, like we said, uh, the, the, the five-year plans are essentially to focus on one particular area. Like this time, we are going to focus on education. Among I mean, while in your in your plans you have for agriculture, education, healthcare, and uh, whatever else it is, but there is special focus given on. I guess the last time it was pushing technology. Sometimes it is last time it was what startup entrepreneurship. Uh, local for vocal and outdoor or whatever, whatever, uh, those kind of things. So like you said, there has to be maybe shorter plans for a year or something where all your resources are directed towards that. And, and, and uh, you know, the, every single problem has to be thought about its short term and long term girls. Then of course, there has to be political will, which means if you want a permission for something that has to be granted during that time, then only we can see some kind of a, a concrete change. I, I would say the, the pandemic has uh, exposed the, our healthcare system terribly, right? Uh, uh, I mean, it, it, it showed how unaffordable our healthcare system is. Only in India, uh, where, where people were really thinking about stuff like uh, oxygen cylinders, what hasn't the government been able to plan it? So I think the next point has to be something like agriculture, which is so basic. I mean, being an agrarian country, that cannot be ignored. Then healthcare is something that's, that has to be taken up. Why, why are our government hospitals still not the place? Where I would never think of going to a government hospital. I can't even imagine going there. So, so may, maybe a seven days newspaper with average uh, pages will be seven pages to ten pages to... No, sir. It's around 18 to 24. But most of them are advertisements, right? No. And not in the pandemic. <laughs> last last <laughs> one and a half year, it, it's really... Okay. Big. Say, assume you have got a seven into ten, 70 pages. Yeah, As okay. I am taking cue from Manmohan Reddy. Can you have a quarter page for farming and marketing only looking at the food and problems and the healthy food yes. and such item. Not about that uh, uh, that studio no, no. the studio programs advertised from the Banjara Hills where <laughs> no dietitians words are not what is required from the right. real producer. Right. Because right. Yes. I am not I am not sure. I don't expect that from Delhi, but right. I am sure it needs for Telangana, Karnataka, Madhya Pradesh. Punjab and such places where they are all the real producers. Yeah, yeah. Do we have any newspaper which carries such an importance to this major issue is a big question which we ask. See, during the pandemic, yes, there have been issues like if, if it was about why oxygen cylinders were not being. So, it, so not just my newspaper, a lot of a bunch of newspapers took it up on a war footing to write about why this uh, why this shortage is, how it can be done. We spoke to doctors, spoke to patients, spoke to suppliers, spoke to manufacturers. And, and then I think, of course, because also the cases came down a lot. But yes, uh, from our own end, I'm not saying every newspaper is committed to, to serving the public. There are many newspapers which are busy making ads. And, and like you said, of the 70 pages in a week, Maybe they give only 15 pages of content rest. All is ads. Uh, that is also, I am not denying that. There are many such uh, entities in the media. Uh, but what I am trying to say is, there has been a conscious effort, you know, conscious effort on reasonably responsible media houses which have taken up these issues and written about it committedly. It's like a campaign that you run across to make sure that there is an impact. So, like you said, maybe you should also, as readers, start demanding these things, not yeah. just new. I think, I think we need to have somebody who really interviews the real farmers, producers, the people who market, go to some market and then Monta market and see that, you know, whether the real producers are selling it yeah. there or how much percentage is eaten by the mediators, the business people, what is yeah. happening in that field, you know. 
Yes. So that yes. the buyers feel comfortable. That is, I think, most important. Correct, sir. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Uh, excuse me. As long as papers are looking for circulation, they will look for the taste buds. What is pleasing for the people? Uh, every paper is looking for circulation, right? And uh, I see, like I know from Kerala, the main newspapers are uh, just like tabloids in UK. They um, publish a lot of titillating uh, articles. That's what they do. And uh, no, uh, of no. course, there is, a, there is no page three, but uh, newspapers are running after the circulation. They are excuse not the me. fifth. Yes, sorry. Excuse me, excuse me. See, what I am looking at over here is some kind of a collaboration that the Hindu has done. Hindu or Enod has done. See, with their kind of a collaboration, at least weekly once, under the, uh, uh, a responsible, uh, conscious uh, kind of a journalism, see, weekly once, why don't we collaborate and create a replicable models in colony wise? Right. That once we start down, then the other people will follow. See, if farmer is only looking at, see, some kind of a solutions from these conscious people, like people like us, city dwellers, that is not happening. See, what a poor farmer can do? He cannot do two jobs. Only he may be good at production. He may not be uh, good at uh, really uh, this marketing. So how I want a, a, a straight answer from your perception. Like what kind of a thing like this, uh, as I said, um, uh, as the doc, Dr. Seshikar said now. See, if you go to the uh, Madhana Pet market or any market, see, you can't stay there for uh, five minutes. The markets are so filthy, you cannot call it a market. So at least uh, uh, one continuously you are saying though, I, I am not just informative, I am going to see that uh, impact. So at least one or two articles continuously if you follow this one, it will have a repercussion. Just imagine that if people are now, they are now it, it, these things won't go. Other day, they, yesterday they, they have shown the video, the whole market is flooded with all the trash. See, it is not ending up out there, we are buying the produce from there. We are not, we become sensitively insensitive. So, just to, if we can address one market, really it is going to have replicable models. People like, you see, the rice bucket challenge, like somebody will uh, get provoked, they may come out with their own kind of a problems and solutions. There is a great so joke, you know, Manju, which says that vegetables are sold on mar uh, the, the road with the full of dust, where the footwear is sold in air-conditioned rooms, you know. <laughs> that's the contrast that's the contrast which we have <laughs> anyway I think we are reaching close to the end of the discussion because Manju is too busy person she has to attend something else I assured her by 8.15 I will relieve her I want in two minutes what could be Manju's impression and take away with this almost an hour of discussion we had Right, sir. What is right. your carry away, take home? What action probably Manju can do? Because we are most impactful. I told you, you know, it's like talking to a judge, talking to a politician, talking to an administrator. I am talking to the three in one. That's a great. And Manju has raised to the highest level in journalism now. She is heading. Right. And she is so powerful, she can have whatever column she wants in Indian Express. <laughs> <laughs> and it's That's always true. a new Indian Express, right, not absolutely. the old Indian Express. So I'm sure it has so, always a new <laughs> form of looking at things. So the takeaway, I think, uh, is that I'll, as a journalist, consciously focus not just on filling up the newspaper, but consciously take up issues that need immediate attention, highlight it, follow it up, Talk to whoever it takes, however long it takes, and with how many ever people it takes to make sure that there is a visible change. In fact, there is a term in journalism, it's called activism, journalistic activism. That is what needs to be not just in me as a journalist, but the entire media fraternity. If don't write, don't just write for the sake of filling it up, but to actually make sure that there is an impact. That is the takeaway that. I take from this discussion today. And what is that tomorrow's news report when you give about this program in your paper? What heading you are going to give? <laughs> <laughs> I will say uh, think tank, think tanks uh, 
uh, think tank urges media to follow up issues. That's the headline. And what India needs yes. is only that or tell what are all the different areas where we have to cover from the coming days in case we extend. I think you have a good mix of uh, speakers, sir. I was just going through the profile. So, like you said, I think uh, health care, education, uh, you know, our ability, corruption, uh, and uh, how how we need to sort of, uh, you know, again, caste, uh, communalism, caste-based politics, casteism, so many things. Every day, you can discuss for the next 365 days. In fact, you should make it an annual affair. So how do we make the next generation youth to enter into an active, creative, smart politics in India? A last word. How do we make them? How do we make them? What can be done? If that is my focus, I am ready to spend my full life for that. I am old enough. I don't want to enter. I could enter in politics anytime. But I want to motivate the young people who are smart yeah. enough, who will work for India. Yes. How do we make them motivated? So, so make them feel that activism begins at home. Like they say, charity begins at home. Activism begins at home. There has to be change and you can bring about a change. There is always this big, uh, big, uh, you know, thought in uh, misconception that we all think we cannot do. But I quote, uh, uh, you know, a motivational line here, which says, do what you can from where you are with what you have. That is what we all have to start and youngsters have to invite this and there is no stopping that. That was a great message. If anybody has got any last point to mention, a small madam, short note. Madam, tomorrow's, tomorrow's setting a rainy given time, save the farmers. If you can give yes. one title, yes. at least I will be, the farmer will be happy and he will pay yes. his gratitude for your kind of and a big risky yeah. kind of a things. I am expecting I? this. <laughs> this Man Manju, Manmohan Reddy can ensure that your bucket is full almost every day. <laughs> that's, that's nice. And all of you, uh, please do connect with me on uh, Facebook. It's Manju Kalanigi. Uh, on Instagram, on Twitter, on LinkedIn, I'm there on every single media. Please do let me know how I can be of help as a human being as a friend, as a journalist, in whatever way I can. I, I am so thankful. This is a small form with little people. Manju is not that a small person. She is being covered by many media, though she is a media person. I have seen a lot of her videos were being interviewed because of her social commitment and activity. So thank you, Manju, for this kindness and being good to all of us, having patience to listen to us. Though she was very tight, I thought, I told, I only spoke to Manju saying, I want you to be the beginner. Because today we started, I thought that you are the person to start because when you covered my story, it gave a lot of motivation. I tell you, I do a lot of work, but not many have, I mean, looked at what we are doing. Right. Uh, Manmohan Reddy always keeps saying food is important, but for Dr. TPS, I always believe education is important. Because I keep saying, Annadanam param danam, vidya danam atat param, annena chanika atruptihi yavad jivam javidya. The food will give you only a little satisfaction for the time being, but education will be give you a longer satisfaction. But I am sure I can tell this only my belly is full. So <laughs> therefore, I still feel food is more important than anything. So that's yes. where I had a lot of dialogue with Manmohan Reddy and he pulled me. Last week we were in his farm. Okay. So I am, I am, I am trying to learn a little bit of farming. And though I am from a farmer's family, my father was a pure farmer. Okay. Right. So I have got my hands full of that activity Why? in my hand. I okay. worked in that and my smell doesn't go from the farming. So I, I am in a second inning. After 54, you say you start a second life. And that is where I thought my interest in farming has gone. Back to that farming. So I am so thankful to Manmohan Reddy for joining. Otherwise, generally, he don't join. And oh, it's so yeah, nice I, that uh, Manju had a good uh, interaction with Manmohan Reddy. So that initiative of during the COVID, what I had also happened. I am so happy Krishna Kumar joined. Vignesh mm -hmm. is there. Rakesh from UK. Vignesh is yeah. from Kerala. 
Geeta is from Bangalore. We have got a lot of students from Hyderabad. We have got Anusha from US. Dr. Yes. Revi is from the Madhya Pradesh, where uh, I have gone. He was a principal of a Maharashtra. Maharashtra, yeah. Maharashtra, he was Nanded. Nanded is a great place of uh, the Sikhism. One of, he took me to that, uh, uh, no? Where, where was that, Revi? Sir, which one? We went to that... Uh, um, Gurudwara. 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 Nanded, Gurudwara. Nanded also we went. So we have got Challa. I am seeing Challa as Gautam. Maybe you can introduce, sir, Challa as Gautam. And we have got Jinu, Lakshmi Prasad from Gundur. Ravindra Nayaks, we have got a lot of people. Chala Gautam Prasad? Uh, yeah. Uh, hello. Uh, From Hyderabad. Chala Gautam Prasad. Yes. Uh, see, I am uh, retired from ECIL, but a okay. senior DGM. Okay. Uh, retired person. I am okay. a, a close friend of Namalikanti Krishnamurti. Oh, lovely. So, uh, through his uh, uh, columns, I have been introduced here. I just thought, but I was late today. By the time I came, uh, already the initial start of uh, everything talk uh, has been going on. Okay. I could not really follow what exactly is the topic and what you are. And later on, now I got, you are a journalist and uh, you are doing a very good job and other things. But still, the print media, as a, as I feel, now has been coming down like anything. Nobody is going to read that print yes. media at all. Yes. And only digital medias yeah. will will be surviving more and more in that. Yeah, so and all print medium have already moved to digital, sir. So the, the yeah. print is there, but everybody has an app, everybody has a website. Absolutely, absolutely. But the second point is, the point that uh, what I, uh, I prickles me is uh, the money that is going flowing from non-entities non-governmental entities and who are spoiling the total broth that is creating negative things in this world, India, which has to be curtailed. Otherwise, those things should be stopped. Otherwise, uh, it is not possible. See, if you say everything, the manju is bad, manju is bad, every day, every time uh, you repeat in different, different quarters, Definitely people will think, yes, there should be something which Manju is not doing, which man, Manju might be doing. So yeah. this is what the creative things that are happening over there. And we have to see that what is good. So now good has become a, good is relative. Every time it is relative only. But what is good, real good is the people down the people have understood and are happy with that, that should be the good. And that is not um, addressed properly. Thank you, Aaron. Uh, I am very thankful to Dr. Sai Kumar, Shashi Kumar. So, I was, uh, 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 I was invited, invited, last minute I came away in that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Gautam Ji. Thank you, each one of you. I think we have many more days to go and I expect probably if it continues beyond 30 days, there is no surprise. I am yeah. sure though we have got very few people but all of them are really glue yeah. on to the screen and I am sure it is going to make some impact. So thank you Manju for the great very Pleasure. kind cooperation. Pleasure. Thank you for choosing me to begin this series. It should not end at 30 or 31 days. It has to be a 365 day affair and this is the platform you are committing to. Definitely. <laughs> I think I am sure there are a lot of people who are coming up and I am sure it will continue for longer. Right. Thank God you, bless you. Good Inshallah. Good Enjoy. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thanks a lot. Bye. Thank you, sir. See you tomorrow at 7.15. Sir, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, G. Thank you, thank you. Thanks a lot.